Welcome to PVTV International. I'm going to present this week editions of our news roundup. Cabinet News, National Unity Government Meeting highlights importance of nation-building visions. During the National Unity Government Meeting, convened on February 20, Acting President Wallace Shilar emphasized the imperative of cultivating a comprehensive nation-building vision among government members. He underscored that merely possessing political or revolutionary perspective is insufficient, advocating for integrations of nation-building objectives into the agenda. In his address, he asserted, to dismantle the military dictatorship, we must harmonize political and revolutionary outlooks while actively fostering our constructive visions for the future. Adding President stressed the significance of collaborated efforts with the revolutionary endeavors to establish robust foundations and conducive environments for the nation's youth. Undermining the potentials and capabilities of our younger generation could impede the realizations of a united and prosperous future, he reiterated. Adding President extends message on 76th Chen National Day. On the occasions of the 76th Chen National Day, celebrated on February 20, Adding President of the National Unity Government, Duwale Shilar, conveyed a poignant message reflecting on the historical significance of the day. The Adding President recalled the steadfast resistance of Chen nationals against the tyrannical rule of terrorist leader Mei Lai. He commanded the bravery of the Chen people, who courageously confronted the military detector head on and continue to actively engage on the ongoing struggle to dismantle the oppressive military ring and establish a federal democratic union. In his message, the Edding president expressed solidarity with the political aspirations of the Chim populace advocating for democracy and self-determination. He affirmed their resilience against imperialism, colonialism and military despotism, waiting success for their political goals. Emphasizing the enduring significance of Chin National Day, the message the message concluded with a declaration that Chen nationals may proudly celebrate this day for generations to come, symbolizing their unwavering commitment to freedom and democracy. Counter-terrorism notification denounces military causes illegitimate actions. And means a series of military setbacks faced by the terrorist military council across the nation, reports reveal the arrest of two desperate measures, including the unlawful passage and enforcement of the People's Military Service Law. The Dacronian legislation aimed to coerce civilians into participating in violent conflicts, exploiting them as human shields in warfare. However, it is imperative to note that the Military Council lacks the authority to enact such law. Any collaborations and activities such as apprehensions, conscriptions and trainings of individuals constitutes a blatant violation of the counter-terrorism law. In response to these egregious actions, the Central Group for Counter-Terrorism issued a resolute notification on February 24. The notification served the crucial purpose of preventing and suppressing crimes associated with terrorism as outlined in Section 3, Subsection B, Subsection 13, 15 and 16 of the Counter-Terrorism Law. This decisive measure underscores the commitment of upholding the rule of law and safeguarding the rights and security of the populace against the oppressive tactics of the illegitimate military council. Central Committee for Interim Implementations of Local Administration Prime Minister Maui Kaindan prioritizes political agreements for counter-terrorism efforts. During a private meeting of the Central Committee for Interim Implementations of Local Administration on February 22, Prime Minister Maui Kaindan articulated a strategic approach towards permanently dismantling the terrorist military council, emphasizing the paramount importance of reaching political accords among stakeholders from diverse regions. The Prime Prime Minister underscored the necessity of collective action with ethnic revolutionary forces in our pursuit to completely eradicate the terrorist group. Collaborated efforts with ethnic revolutionary forces from various regions are indispensable, affirmed the Prime Minister. He reiterated that the attainments of political agreement stand as a prerequisite for achieving the desired objective. As such, the government's primary focus rests on securing this agreement among relevant stakeholders, signifying a proactive step towards fostering unity and stability across the nation.
train lottery introduces increased prices. The Ministry of Planning, Finance and Investment of the National Unity Government announced enhancement to the Aulan Lunti Nui on spring lottery effective on February 20. Notably, the lottery prices have been substantially augmented to offer participants greater incentive. The revised price structures for the spring lottery include a first price of 500 million jots, a second price of 200 million jots, and a third price of 100 million jots, alongside a special price of 50 million jots. Additionally, each spring lottery ticket prizes 2,000 Myanmar jots, present an opportunity for winning one of over 20,000 prizes. Ministry of Human Rights National Unity Government enables reporting of human rights violation under false conscription law. The Ministry of Human Rights of the National Unity Government announced on February 19 that citizens are encouraged to report instances of human rights violations committed by individuals utilizing the People's Military Service Law issued by the Terrorist Military Council. The Ministry pledges to offer additional protections and support essential for the effective prosecutions of those responsible for war crimes. Complaints and information can be submitted through the Ministry's social media pages, ensuring accessible channel for reporting and facilitating prompt action against perpetrators. National Unity Government Condemns Prousy Militia Atrocity in Zagai Region The Ministry of Human Rights of the National Unity Government issued a damning announcement on February 22, revealing a horrific incident perpetrated by Buzoti, Prousy Militia in line with the military council. In a heinous act, six members of the local family, including women and a three-year-old child, were mercilessly killed in Mianzi village, Shuibu Township, Zagai region, on February 15. At approximately 5 p.m., a group of 15 armed individuals from Buzoti, Malaysia, led by Te Ao, an individual decorated with Durab medal by the terrorist military hunter, brutally targeted and executed the family of Ulin while they were walking in the fields. Notably, Ulin served as the ward chairman for the election commissions in 2020. The Ministry of Human Rights has vowed to pursue justice vigorously, denouncing the atrocity committed by the military hunter. Upholding the principles of equality, peace and justice for all, the Ministry reaffirmed its unwavering commitment to hold perpetrators accountable and ensure the safety and well-being of all citizens. Ministry of Home Affairs and Immigration Public defense against terrorist military suppressions leads to casualty, admits relentless violence suppression, arrests, attacks and killings perpetrated by the terrorist military group against civilians. The public has united in self-defense to safeguard their survival. The Ministry of Home Affairs and Immigration disclosed on February 22nd that nearly 50 members of the military hunter met their demise, with 20 substantial injuries in the defensive operation. Ministry of Education recognizes online school to ensure continued education amidst crisis. On February 20, the Ministry of Education announced the recognition of two online schools as interim basic education public education school, affirming their adherence to established policy. These schools are actively collaborating with ground-based public education institutions to ensure that students deprived of learning opportunities during this interim period can continue their education. Furthermore, the Ministry disclosed that among the schools that have submitted a uh accreditations application, those verifying to comply with the 11 public education school, accreditations policies and information and technology security policies will be designated as interim basic education public education schools. This initiative aims to provide a seamless educational experience for students amidst the ongoing crisis. Overview of military operations in the fourth week of February 2024 During the fourth week of February 2024, resistant attacks escalated in Mandalay and Zagai regions with military camp seat in Gachin State. In the northern Shan region, while the military presence is relatively calm, clashes have arisen between the Shan State Progressive Body, SSPB, but all National Liberation Army, 
PNLE and troops of the Terrorist Military Council. In Natoji Township, Nabu Ai region, Mandalay Division's 100 strong columns of the military counter was targeted by BDF Myeongchan District No. 4 Battalion, Natoji PAF and Logia Defense Group, resulting in the deaths of seven individuals and at least 10 injuries. Similarly, along Myeongchan Down Da Road, the Myeongchan District No. 1 Battalion apprehended seven militiamen, including the village administrator and member of Pizoti. As well, the convoy of the Honduras Deputy Minister of Information, Uye Deng, was attacked via a mine explosion on the return journey from the National Adi Resource Development Degree College, resulting in the deaths of 100 military officers. The People's Defense Forces also seized control of the Kantuma village military camp in Dezay, Sagai region, confiscating approximately 20 weapons. The Sikhanji Jekhan base in Mansi Township, Kachin State, was captured by joint forces comprising the KIA, KPDF, and AA. The operation resulted in the captures of over 40 enemy combatants and more than 50 various weapons and ammunition. Military hunter soldiers also deserted their strategic hill in Nyona, Shwegu Township. Additionally, the Kachin Independence Army has seized control of Medina. Township, Simbo Town, with the LIB 141 unit near the town coming under attack. In the northern Shan, for Ozone, Kobong Township clashes with the PNNA led to the captures of four hunters and military members, corpses, and fight weapons. Similarly, the PNNA captured one military camp in Kobong Township. Moreover, Luai Wotok military camp above Tansamkif, situated between Kobong Town and my Town was seized by SSPP and Allied Forces. Let's see what do we have for our weekly rounded news in coming weeks. Thanks for watching PVTV International.